Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Jonna speaking and as you can see today again I will show you Lords of Ragnarok and all the components in this game up close exactly the way I like it and I hope that you will too. If you want to see how to play Lords of Ragnarok I refer you my previous recording about this game where I explain you how to play but if you want to hear about the changes to Lords of Hellas check back soon an interview with uh, author of this game Adam Fapinski but today I'm going to open the box so we can take a look uh, at how to prototype looks like all the components cards miniatures and the board well that is the board so far it's a big card with a map but remember I'm showing you a prototype it's not the final game yet and a lot can still change okay let's look in the box by the way I think the box cover is final and now a little trick because the boxes of miniatures don't fit into the core box yet but I think the Waker Rams team is working on getting each miniatures to to fit in the core box. As you can see, each character has a unique ability described on the character tail. So take a peek at what is look her for each and right after show you the, the character miniatures and I will start with Ragnar because he looks absolutely awesome. Lagerta Hydes behind her shield, so you can see much of her character, but she has a great special ability. Just for looking at Beowulf, I see that he is a tough guy. And it is interesting concept for this character. What do you think? She's probably the most mysterious character, Aslak. Just look at all this detail. Are you also curious about what is under this shroud? Snorri. It's just a curiosity. A viking without weapons? But he has some kind of musician instrument, so, so he probably kill with the sound. It's a bit like myself with my English for some of you. Sorry, guys. Okay, next part of miniatures. Armies for each player. Each miniature has a modified strength, so it's uh, it's not just individual units, but whole squads of uh, soldiers. I like trackers and their sails made of hexes. Uh, it looks great, and these are supposed to be more of them in the game. Something completely new in this version of the game, that is um, the action whale. We put it in the middle of the board. In addition, it's connected by realms, and this is a really interesting thing. And as you can see, it doesn't always work out the first time. It usually takes many tries. I mentioned about uh, realms. Now you see the realms cards, each with different bonus and each has a different runes attached to it. Runes are another new thing that appears in the game. Oh yes, there is one of my favorite monsters. Dragons always look great. But this graphics looks great too. Of course, each creature has different special attacks and different uh, set of wounds and, and a different ward after killing it. And once you have killed two of them, you can try to defeat the final boss, I mean Loki. And this is one of the strategies, because when you kill him, you win right away. Well, take a look at how everyone is looking.
To be honest, the miniatures are not most important here in this game, but there are some that are hard to miss. Each of monuments is absolutely divine, so perhaps it's better without my commentaries. We send priests uh, to the monuments, just like in Lords of Hellas, but we must have them uh, in the Tokar. And each monument will provide different, uh, different attractions, uh, depending on the level of construction. What else is on the Drakkar? A tile of origin. A monk of... a tile of origin. Each has very interesting abilities, and it will be hard to choose just one, but, but you have to. new endgame condition, since Nordic gods and Vikings Ragnarok cannot be missing. So we have cards with conditions and when three of them are fulfilled, the end of the world happens, really. I didn't show you too many artifacts in the previous video, so, so take a peek uh, at those cards here. We have two types of artifacts, one assigned to the monster and the other to gods, and of course each with a different ability. Since I'm showing the cards, take a look at all of them. The event cards indicate the region's number where we will send the creatures and, and what monsters uh, will activate during the game. combat cards, you know what you need them for. Each, as you can see, has a symbol that you match to the monster to inflict the wound on it while hunting, and each has a specific strength and ability. But the monsters also have their own deck of attack cards, and similarly we have a strength and weakness value and and surprise when we fail to defend against an attack. Blessing cards are associated with uh, the three gods and provide varying effects. Uh, they can be obtained by building temples and their abilities work through the game. And this is how the player boards look like. But work on them is in progress. Thank you guys, come for another video with my guest talking about this game, Martin Ferkot the Adam Klopinski. Uh, it will be coming soon and um, for today it's all. Thanks again and see you soon. Bye.